So we have here uh, additional parts to be added, sockets, connectors, uh, capacitors, etc. So I'm going to go lowest profile up, as I typically do, and go with the sockets next. And make sure that I actually get them in the right orientation. match the silk screen. So I'm going to assume they're incorrect. Tack them down. Get the corner pins. Push them up tight. And finish soldering. So. Sorry for the noise outside. Uh, it's warm enough here. I need the window open. The uh, LED lighting in the lab throws out a lot of heat. on each one of the sockets. So far, not a bad board to assemble. Uh, I think he says the instructions is probably isn't a project for a first time uh, solderer. I don't know that I disagree. Well, it's not a complex board. very reasonable. Where it's going to get interesting are the switches and the LEDs. Uh, because you end up using that metal carrier frame that came out of the case as an alignment jig. It should be interesting to see how that comes together. Pretty excited to get this thing together and get it running. Uh, have a, a 
Plasma Hunter machine in an actual case. You know, a nice reproduction of great early machine. Sockets look good. I guess I can move on to the five despiking capacitors. I'm going to assume there's one per IC. These are just 0.1 microfarad uh, ceramic caps. Very standard parts around digital electronics. Of course, I can't hold on to this one to get it in. I am, as I always do, I'm putting them in with the in this case, all of them with the text facing towards the top of the PCB. It's just kind of a attention to detail thing for me. Just something to hold them in. I will hit one lead, check them for alignment, and finish soldering them. Crooked, which is interesting. Not that it matters, but I'm going to see if I can bend them all up just straight. So it'll look a little nicer. Not that anybody but me would ever notice. Get the pen. Microfarad electrolytic, which is this guy right here. So we could take one of the. Yeah, I'm not going to find a, a bending rig here to help. This is a Nishikon cap, it's an 85 degree C cap. It should be absolutely fine. Put it in with the reading markings, you know, the capacitance, etc., up just for future service. Good. We've got this connector on the back, which is for switching the AC power. perfectly flush. I'm going to reflow and just push again. Yeah, that's fine. There's a 
indicator on the silk screen, the little narrow rectangle over there. This is the hint where this tab here goes. So I've done that. And now we come down to this connector, which also goes on the back, with pin 1 down here. And I have yet to find any markings on here. Oh, there it is. There's an arrow up there that points down to pin 1. Because there's this key slot here, we really do want to get that kind of the right direction. Let's go ahead and fold back the locking tabs. Typically you find an arrow like that pointing down at, at pin 1 on a connector. I'm just going to hit a couple of the pins opposite corners, then I'll push it flush, and then I'll walk through the rest of them once I know it's been flush. No, wrong pin soldered, but that's okay. And this, of course, takes the ribbon cable that then connects this up to the uh, front panel board that actually goes in the chassis. In the S100 chassis, so we're very close here to having this board done. The switches and the LEDs will be the most complex part of the assembly because of alignment. Board layout looks really nice. Uh, the build quality, there's, you know, the manufacturer's done a really good job based on everything I can see. It's not super densely populated, which makes it easier to solder on, which is nice. this board will be held to that uh, metal front panel assembly again by the switches which is part of why getting the switch alignment perfect matters that it can be slid in and out as needed uh, you know, if it doesn't work up front I've got to pull it out to troubleshoot it you need to be able to get it out if you just solder the switches up you know loose it's never going to line up and go in so I have pre-read the manual, the assembly manual, although I'm going back to it for details all the time. So that really gets us as far as that's going to go, when it really should be down to just LEDs and switches. And the switches come next. So let me go back and revisit the manual for the installation of the switches. the metal panel like so. So pull it up in the air so we do that next. Metal panel like so. And it's supported. Resistors are in, sockets are in, C1 to C6, C6, prop the panel up an inch or two above your work surface, orient the bracket as shown in the picture below, with these to the back, place the power switch in the bracket far left corner as shown, which is over here. Note that each switch has a slot in the threaded housing. Orient the slot of all switches away from you, away from your view as you put them in the bracket. Okay. Let's find the first switch. This is not it. It's right 
here. So this is the power switch. This is a special switch uh, due to the apparently silver contacts. hardware in the bag here, which I will recapture because we don't need that anymore. He wants us to move on to momentary switches with gold terminals and the eight holes across the bottom of the bracket. So that's these eight holes down here. And those eight switches for me are in this container. Should all be center off. They're momentary with the slot out that direction. These switches were I went with the quality ones, the ones you recommended, and I, they were the most expensive part of this, I mean, you know, the case and everything ages ago was, but for this particular build, uh, these switches were, I want to say, a little over $4 each. I probably could have found a better deal. I already had a large order on Melser, and I just went ahead and ordered them there. switches. Which I would assume go the next row up. Place 10 to 25 with gold terminals, 16 holes, and slot slot goes away. That's oh well that tremendously helped, didn't it? back and tweak these into alignment again and work the PC board down over them which will be interesting it's interesting on this machine that the uh, address data switches here are laid out in octal rather than hex that again speaks to the age of the machine Very nice feeling switches, nice positive action. They're not super stiff. I've got some really cheap equivalents of these here. And they're stiff, they feel kind of clunky. They bind inside. A few of these I played with are just nice and smooth. And they're definitely quality switches. somewhat square so I have a chance of the holes in the PCB actually lining up for soldering. Let's see. 
print to touch one and tap another one. And they're a little touchy. I'd like to find something too thick of about the same height as the body. Because he talks about the back of the board here, the weight of the board tipping the board over. Uh, kind of causing problems. And that's pretty close. That'll make just a nice spacer there. So the 16 are above. The slots are again away. Check all switches are squarely aligned as possible. Carefully don't want the circuit board down on. Of course that's thicker. Yeah. This is going to be a problem. Just something to help keep the board from lurching all the way over. Let's square these a little better. Let's see if we have any chance of this actually going down onto these. Just like that. Perfect, and I will, I think, solder one pin. Uh, take the spacers out, just because the board is actually laying on on them. Oh, I can just kind of, I think. Oh, don't do that. Why are you insisting on moving? opposite the direction I want you to. I just want these kind of back out of the way. And it's really just going to be a matter of holding the board square. Not square, but up flush against the bottom of the switches. And Oh, wonderful, I've trapped the solder underneath the, the stand here. Put some pressure down. solder joints, but we'll come back around. I should be able to lift that up out of there now. That handles must be, well, need to be in the right, same direction for that to be able to lift up out of there. And we'll just take a look at the switches and see if they all seem reasonably straight. And they do. Switch there's a little cockeyed.
the pen over here. I think I will call that good enough for the switches. Can I work that back up out of there? I can. Center pull or a center off. Power switch. Data switches. Or address switches. They feel really nice. Nice positive action. They sound very consistent. Pretty happy with that. So that's come together very well. Of course, now can I get it? go back in. Oh, I spun it around. Got the power switch over here now. That's why nothing's lying in there. And of course the mounting hardware on the switches will be what secures the board in place. So next thing becomes all those LEDs. And if I remember what I read, I'm going to want to put the front panel with the silk screen back in place. It's just a height above the board. Use the front dress panel as a jig. Do not cut or prep LED leads until after soldering. Shoot them fully into the circuit board. Cathodes closer to the top side of the circuit board and anode closer to the bottom. Get all, the, all of those dropped in. Work the front dress panel of the switches and then down the switch bushings slightly. You don't need to push the switch panel all the way down to the... Okay. Carefully adjust the spacing between the PCB and the front panels and accommodate the four 5 8 spacers provided. Uh, I don't remember getting four 5 inch spacers. To go back and look in the box, there was the pick that was pre-programmed and this. Okay, I may have to find some 5.8 spacers. Now, I'm going to stop the recording here, take a break, look for spacers, and I'll be back. <laughs>